Welcome back to the procedural content generation series using Godot 3. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use an algorithm called the midpoint displacement algorithm to make 2D terrain. The node we want to use for our midpoint algorithm is the line 2D. This is a collection of points that the engine will draw on the screen. You can actually click and draw lines, although we're going to obviously be generating this in code. So it doesn't really matter what you click. We're going to clear it and generate the points uh, automatically. Uh, you can delete them if you want using the editor buttons. Uh, so this for the settings that we have here, basically you have width, which is how wide you want the line to be when it's drawn. You can leave that. And then what color you want to do. Um, I like to use like a bright green. It'll be nice and visible. Obviously, you can use whatever color you like. Uh, the capping section is um, controls how it draws the joints and the endpoints. And you know, we can just put um, round on all of these, and it'll round off the edges, which looks a little nicer. And that's really all we have to do for the node settings before we attach a script to it. First, we're going to have some variables that are going to control uh, the properties of our algorithm. So displacement is going to be how much we offset the midpoint when we move it up or down in pixels. Uh, the next one is iterations. This is going to be how many times we want to do it. How many times do we want to go through again and, and move the next uh, level of midpoints? And then um, I'm going to use one called height. That's where we want to place it on the screen. So this is going to be for the starting points. Okay. And then the first thing we need to do when we start is um, in our ready, we're going to say init, init line. And that's because we want to um, initialize the line with the two starting points. Uh, we also want to randomize so that we have our random number generator ready. And now init line is going to just create two random points. We want a random point on the left side of the screen and a random point on the right side of the screen um, to be our starting two points in our line. So we need to get the screen size. And so that's get viewport, um, get uh, visible rect size. And then points is the property of the line 2D that contains uh, an array. So if we go over here and look, points points is this property. It contains a vector two pool vector two array with all of the uh, points in it. So if we want to initialize that, we set it to an empty array. So now our line has zero points in it. And then we just need to calculate where we want our start and end point to be. So the starting point is going to be on the left-hand side. So the x is 0. And the y, we want to pick a ran range between uh, height minus uh, displacement. And put this on the next line because it's a little easier to read. Height plus displacement. And so that's going to be our first point. And then end is the same thing, basically, except we want it to be on the opposite side. So it's going to be at screen size dot x, and then the same rand range. So I will just copy and paste this. And then we have our two uh, we have our two points, and we just want to add those to oops, add point start add point end. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're doing the line 2D. So this points property has the is, is a vector2 array and you could use if you did points dot add, you're using the array function to add a thing you know to the array that does not work. It doesn't add it to the line. You have to use the lines add point and remove point functions if you want to get it to work. So that's all we need to do right now. Let's give it a shot here. If we run it, um, here, let's call this uh, 
I'm going to name this terrain line and save it. And when we run it, we will see that we just get a line across the screen, right? Just pick two random points somewhere on the sides. Okay, now we need our function that runs the midpoint displacement algorithm. This is going to be one step through. Just go through each point in the line and between each pair of points, create a new midpoint and move it up or down. So I'm going to call this add points. And so first we need to get what our old points are, what our current ones are. Okay, so that's what, what we're uh, pulling out right now. That's right now has the two points in it, but anytime we run this, it's going to take the, the points that exist in the line, and we're going to zero out we're going to zero out the um, the line itself, so that we can go and modify this, and then once we've modified it, we'll put it back in. So for i n range, we want to count from from basically zero, which is the first point, to old points dot size minus one, right? So if there are two lines, for example, two minus one is one, we're going to count to one, which means we're only going to look at the first point because we want to look at the point and the one to the right of it. And so we want to, there's no point to the right of the last line. So we don't, or the last point, the last point doesn't have a point to the right of it. So we're not going to look at that point. So the midpoint is going to be old points I, whatever one we're on, plus old points i plus 1, and we just divide by 2, right? Add two points together, divide by 2, you get the average point between them. So now we've found the midpoint of the line between those two, or the segment between those two, and we're going to take the midpoint y, and we're going to add to it. We're going to displace it by the displacement, and then we want that displacement to go up or down. We want to randomly choose up or down. So basically, we want to multiply by 1, or negative one. So we want to randomly choose one or negative one. And we can do that using this little formula here. We want to multiply or raise one, negative one, to the zero or one power. So we get a random number. That random number is going to be even, in which case this is zero, or odd, in which case it's one. Negative one to the one power is negative one, and negative one to the zero power is positive one. So then we get displacement being positive or negative. So this is a handy little formula to know if you ever need a random choice between plus one and minus one. So now we add um, we add uh, add point old points i. So we add the point we just looked at. We add the new midpoint we just figured out and then we keep going and then at the very end we'll just add in that old uh, last one uh, the size minus one one all right now this just goes through and does the algorithm once so it goes in so Eventually, we're going to want to repeat it, you know, this many times. But while we're trying it out, it's kind of nice to just do it one at a time. So if we want to run this once, we can connect this to the um, mouse button and just say whenever we click, we'll do it. So we'll add an input um, event here and say if it's the mouse, if event is input mouse button and event dot pressed, then I want to say add add points. Uh, so now what happens is whenever I click the mouse, it's going to run this. So let's try that out. We'll run it. There's our one line. So now we picked a point in the middle and it displaced it. Now it's going to, when I click again, it should displace both of these. Yep. 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 Okay. Now if I keep going, you see we're going to get a really jagged line. And this is fine if you're doing I don't know, a stock market simulation or something, and you want a lot of big swings and things. But what we want is um, something that looks a little more smooth, like terrain. And the way to do that is to get, uh, is to, we want to smooth it out a bit. And so what we want is we want that displacement to 
get smaller each iteration. So as you, as you do it more and more, the closer the two points get together, the smaller the displacement of the new midpoint should be. And so we kind of want it to decay. Uh, and we can use an exponential decay function for that, which will make it look really nice. And uh, here's how that works. So we'll go up here to the top, and we're going to add one more new variable. And this is a float. So I'm going to go ahead and mark here, because we want smooth 1.1. I'm going to start with it being 1.1. The reason I put float there is in case you, if you don't specify the hint for what you want to export, um, like if I did this, it would export it as an integer. And if I tried to type 0 0.5 in there or whatever, the inspector wouldn't accept it. So um, it's a good little trick to know in case you need it. And then I'm going to have a variable called current displacement. And this is going to hold what our, you know, our changing displacement as we go through it. So that means when we initialize the line, we want to start with the current displacement being equal to the chosen starting displacement. And then in the add points, we want to use current displacement here. All right, oops, I autocomplete. Uh, current displacement here. And then after we've done the whole iteration, we want to decay the current displacement. So we take the current displacement and we're going to multiply it by 2.0 to the negative smooth, whatever our smooth value was set to. So this is, a, this is called an exponential decay function and it will make the current displacement get smaller and smaller each iteration. So let's see what that looks like. So there's our line. We do one. Now the next ones will be displaced a little bit less, and a little less, and a little less, and a little less. And we have a nice, smoother looking line. And you can change around how you want your smoothing to be, right? If my smooth was only 0 0.6, for example, you'll see I'm going to get a much more jagged result, right? That looks more like a mountain range or something. And a higher value is going to be more of a smooth flowing hills. Typically something between 0 0.5 and 1.1 works the best. You get below 0 0.5 and it's just going to turn into that spiky mess again and you get above 1.1 and it's barely going to change at all. It'll dec decay too fast. And then one more thing we can do if we want to turn this into a solid shape is add a polygon 2D as a child and then in the script we'll use that to make our shape. So if we go to the ready, we're going to set the polygons color just to use the same color we chose for the line. So that makes it easy to keep them the same. And then when we initialize the line, we're going to set the polygon to these polygon equal to the same points. We want to use the same points that we used, except we need to add two more. Right, because if I run it here again real quick, I'm going to iterate this a couple of times. So I want the polygon to be this whole shape underneath. So I need to add this point and this point. I need to add the two corners, and then it'll be a solid shape. So that means that we need to here, we need to add or grab the points out of our line 2D and append those additional corner points, which is screen size dot x comma screen size dot y that's the bottom right hand corner and then also the uh, zero comma screen size dot y and that's the bottom left corner then we can set the polygons points or polygon equal to that and now we'll go ahead and have this instead of doing the input now that we've got our process down, I'm going to remove the clicking and just say when we initialize the line, we add the points. So right here, we're just going to say for i in range iterations, add points. So then we can just call that whenever we do it. And actually, I take that back. Let's do this. Let's say that when we press the mouse button, 
we'll initialize the line again. So we can just see our different shapes. So see there, it makes the polygon under there. And so for example, if you overlaid a couple of these on top of each other, you can get some backgrounds with some different patterns of layers of hills and things. You give them different iteration and smoothing values, and you can get a wide variety of resulting effects pretty quickly. So that'll do it for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll continue looking at terrain, 2D terrain generation, but we'll look at how to do an infinitely scrolling smooth hills instead of these uh, jagged mountainous type of hills. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.